chapter thirty eight of a popular history of the art of music from the earliest times until the present by w s b matthews this librivox recording is in the public domain french operatic composers of the nineteenth century in the earlier part of the nineteenth century the operatic stage of paris shared with those of berlin and dresden the honor of producing brilliant novelties by the best composers in france there had been a persistent cultivation of this province of musical creation and many talented composers have appeared upon the scene of the grand opera and that of the opera comique french opera has developed into a genre of its own rhythmically well regulated instrumented in a pleasing and attractive manner and staged with considerable reference to spectacular display the oldest of these masters to achieve distinction and the one most successful in gaining the ear of other countries than france was daniel francois esprit Aubet seventeen eighty two eighteen seventy he was born in caen in normandy of a family highly gifted and artistic in temperament nevertheless his father intended him for a merchant and sent him to england in eighteen o four in the hope that the study of commercial success there might wean him from his love of music but the boy came back more musical than ever after composing several pieces a little opera a mass etc his first opera to be publicly performed was le Séjour militaire during the fifteen years next following he wrote a succession of light operas for the smaller theatres of paris most of them with librettos by scribe no one of these works had more than a temporary success and the names are not sufficiently important to be given here at length in eighteen twenty eight he produced his masterwork la muette di portici otherwise known as masaniello which at once placed its author upon the pinnacle of fame this was an opera upon the largest scale and was the first in order of the three great master works which adorned the paris stage during this and the three years following the others were rossini's tell in eighteen twenty nine and meyerbeer's robert in eighteen thirty one the subject was fortunately related to the spirit of the times masaniello having been leader of the insurgents in naples the work well deserved its success since for melody and pleasing effects it has rarely been surpassed the overture is still much played as a concert number but the opera itself has nearly left the stage excepting in germany where it still has a distinguished place all his later works were lighter than masaniello they were la fiancée eighteen twenty nine the extremely melodious and popular fra diavolo eighteen thirty and many others for more than twenty years still among them were the bronze horse in eighteen thirty five le domino noir in eighteen thirty seven and the crown diamonds eighteen thirty one obey was elected member of the institute in eighteen twenty nine and in eighteen forty two succeeded cherubini as director of the conservatory he was an extremely witty and charming man beloved by all contemporaneous with obey but more allied to the genius of boieldieu was louis joseph ferdinand Hérold, seventeen ninety one eighteen thirty three after studying at the conservatory and composing a number of operas which failed or had but moderate success he brought out zampa in eighteen thirty one this work had an extraordinary success and its overture is still often heard another work le pre au clair eighteen thirty two is generally esteemed in france more highly than zampa but outside his native country public opinion universally regards the latter as his best work Hérault's operas are extremely well conceived from a dramatic point of view and his melody has much of the sweet and flowing quality of the best italian his concerted numbers also are well made and in all respects he is to be regarded as a master of high rank within the province of light opera verging indeed upon the confines of the romantic type like that of weber 
the true successor of boieldieu with perhaps somewhat less of originality was adolphe charles adam eighteen o three eighteen fifty six son of a piano teacher in the conservatory at paris his most lasting work was le postillon de longjumeau eighteen thirty six in which the german tenor wachtel made himself so famous most of the other productions of this clever but not deep composer are now forgotten in their day they pleased the most important work of the last half-century of french opera was the faust of charles francois gounod eighteen eighteen produced in eighteen fifty nine gounod was born and educated at paris took the prize of rome in eighteen thirty seven after composing quite a number of works of a semi-religious character in which direction he has always had a strong bias his first opera was produced in eighteen fifty four la nonne sanglante in eighteen fifty two he was made director of the orpheonistes the male part singers of paris numbering many thousands somewhat answering to the organization of the tonic sol fa in england faust made an epoch in french opera its rich and sensuous music its love melodies of melting tenderness and the cleverness of the instrumentation as well as its pleasing character combine to place it in a category by itself this was the beginning and the end of gounod for in his other works while there is much cleverness and melodiousness there is also much reminder of faust perhaps the best of his later operas are romeo et juliette eighteen sixty seven and mireille eighteen sixty four among the others were saint mars polyeucte le tribut de zamora he has also written an oratorio the redemption produced at birmingham in eighteen eighty two many numbers in which are truly imposing as a whole the work is mystical and sensuous rather than strong or inspired a continuation of this work mors et vita was given at birmingham in eighteen eighty five and the following year several times in america under the direction of mr theodore thomas in this work a part of the text of which consists of the latin hymn dies ire gounod contrives to repeat certain of the sensational effects of berlioz's work both these oratorios belong to an intermediate category in oratorio sensational effects possible only in the concert room intervening with others planned entirely in a devotional and mystic spirit as a composer gounod has two elements of strength he is first of all a lyrical composer of unusual merit as can be seen in his oh that we two were maying nazareth there is a green hill far away etc his second element of greatness is his talent for well-sounding and deliciously blending instrumentation in which respect he is one of the best representatives of the french school this quality is happily shown upon a small scale in connection with the other already mentioned in his famous ave maria with violin and organ obligato superimposed upon the first prelude in bach's well-tempered clavier unfortunately his structural ability is not equal to the strain of elaborate dramatic works in which the interest greatly depends upon the music following the complications of the drama in faust and in all his other operas the songs are the main attraction the songs and the choruses the finales are poorly constructed with little invention and less progress of dramatic intensity among the better composers of the later french school was felix marie victor massé eighteen twenty two to eighteen eighty four who experienced the usual fortunes of the better class of french composers having taken the prize of rome in eighteen forty four and produced his first opera la chanteuse voilée in eighteen fifty which was followed by his galatea in eighteen fifty two and the marriage of jeannette in eighteen fifty three 
encouraged by these successes he produced a large number of operas in italy of which the best were la reine topaz eighteen fifty six and les saisons eighteen fifty five in eighteen sixty he became chorus master at the academy of music and in eighteen sixty six professor of composition at the conservatory in eighteen seventy two he was elected to the institute as successor of Aubé in addition to the works already mentioned he produced paul and virginia eighteen sixty six and several others besides a number of songs his last opera le mort de cleopatre was written during his long sickness and on the whole was not a success another pleasing french composer is jules emile frederic massenet eighteen forty two who took the prize of rome in eighteen sixty three and in eighteen sixty seven produced his first opera la grande tante in addition to this he composed a number of operas le roi de lahore eighteen seventy seven marie madeleine eighteen seventy three an oratorio and eve in eighteen seventy five he has also written a number of orchestral suites which have been very popular in all countries his latest work l'hommage was produced at the grand opera paris march eighteen ninety one one of the most brilliant and versatile of the french musicians of this generation is m camille saint saon eighteen thirty five a virtuoso upon the piano and organ and an orchestral tone poet of very rare quality educated in the conservatory he composed his first symphony when he was sixteen and was organist of the church of st marie at the age of eighteen in eighteen fifty eight he became organist at the madeleine he has produced a number of operas of which le timbre d'argent eighteen eighty seven samson and delilah eighteen seventy seven and etienne marcel eighteen seventy nine henry the eighth eighteen eighty three and ascanio produced in eighteen ninety at the grand opera in addition to these saint saon has produced a large number of orchestral pieces including le mouet d'onfal le danse macabre and other symphonic poems of the programme character he has also written several oratorios of which the deluge is the most important and a large amount of chamber and pianoforte music he is a brilliant writer about music he is favorably known in germany and all the rest of europe as a virtuoso upon the piano and organ his second concerto for piano is one of the best virtuoso pieces for that instrument in his melodie et harmonie a collection of newspaper essays he discusses many interesting questions his fame with posterity is more likely to rest upon his orchestral pieces which are extremely clever and interesting than upon his operas personally he is said to be very witty and entertaining he has been a member of the institute since eighteen seventy four another french composer versatile and well gifted in orchestral composition is clement philibert leo de libre eighteen forty eight after his education at the conservatory and his service as an accompanist at the grand opera he received in eighteen sixty six a commission to compose a ballet la source in which he displayed such a wealth of melody and such fortunate rhythm that his talent was henceforth unmistakable he has since composed a large number of ballets many of which are known in all parts of the world such as sylvia also a large number of songs his principal opera was lacme eighteen eighty three he is a professor at the conservatory a member of the legion of honor and the successor of victor massé at the institute still another very talented composer of orchestral music is edouard victor antoine lalot eighteen twenty three who was originally a violinist in a favorite string quartet he has composed a large amount of orchestral music a violin concerto in f eighteen seventy four symphonie espagnole eighteen seventy five for violin and orchestra a rhapsody norvegienne and many other orchestral works besides several operas of which the roi dix eighteen eighty eight is the most important 
he received the cross of the legion of honor in eighteen eighty and is one of the best of the french composers many of his works have been played by theodore thomas georges bizet eighteen thirty eight eighteen seventy five is best known as the composer of carmen eighteen seventy five he had previously produced a considerable number of smaller works which had been but moderately successful in carmen however he showed qualities of rhythmic and harmonic coloration which promised brilliant results in the future his career was prematurely cut short by death he was a fine pianist the nestor of still living french composers is monsieur charles amboise thomas eighteen eleven born at metz in the same year as liszt and only one and two years after schumann and chopin this venerable and highly gifted master early succeeded in catching the ear of the french public and between eighteen thirty seven when his la double echelle was performed at the opera comique until eighteen forty eight he produced a succession of charming light pieces in the taste of the day there was a sort of middle period in which he wrote several very witty works for the same stage but the time of his greatest career dates from the production of mignon eighteen sixty six hamlet eighteen sixty eight and francesca da rimini eighteen eighty two he was elected to the institute in eighteen fifty one and at obey's death in eighteen seventy one was made director of the conservatoire in which important position he has accomplished much toward systematizing and deepening musical education monsieur thomas is a highly cultivated man of the world tall slender fond of physical exercise he has retained the faculties of an active and very versatile mind to an old age his opera of mignon is probably the one of his productions which will last longest of french opera as a whole during this century the general characterization may be made that it has gained in cosmopolitan quality nearly all the composers mentioned in the present chapter having gained a world-wide fame the distinguishing feature of this class of opera is its sprightly rhythm and the clearness of the melodic forms the instrumentation also is generally clever the music is pleasing rather than deep and the popularity of french opera in germany for example is mainly due to its value as a relief to the often undue elaboration of the original german article End of chapter 38